All right. So we're going to be talking about a, a few different things. Uh, the first item is the Confluence update, so the intranet, which I think we should just all agree to call it one thing so we don't have to keep flip-flopping. At least I'm flip-flopping it. So anybody have a, uh, has it already been established? Do we say intranet or Confluence? I, we say I, both? I what do you say? I, I call it intranet because if you ever change it, it makes it a lot easier. I agree. So we'll, we'll call it the intranet. So, um, there was a tech talk done by Martin earlier. Here it is. So today's tech talk is supposed But we're not going to watch the whole thing. But this presentation you'll be able to get online, plus it's in the internet, right? So you can go watch a lot of that. He covered a lot of the, the how-tos, the, the different items that you can do throughout there. We just didn't update, though. And so with that, uh, there's a lot of the, the UI is different. You, you might be having some searching issues. Um, you, so I want to help alleviate some of that today to make sure that we can move forward because uh, the system really did get elevated a lot. Uh, and so to start it out, I'm going to share this video with everyone. The biggest change we'll see in Commons 5 is a completely overhauled, uh, completely redesigned interface. Um, probably the biggest interface overhaul we've ever done in the last year's history. The Confluence 5 Redesign is all about bringing the product back to its core its simplicity and making everything clean and giving it a modern look and feel. We've redesigned the product thinking about all the different screens in a lot of detail. The view page is much cleaner, crisper and easier to read. It's clean, it's modern um, and it feels like a new product. The new space sidebar is probably one of the most visual features in Confluence 5. It allows you to see uh, the most important content in that space, the types of things that space is used for, and navigate around to relevant information uh, at the same time. If you just want to see the content, it very quickly uh, disappears out of your way. The sidebar is extremely customizable, so administrators can go in and add links to other important documents. In Confluence 5, we've simplified the whole content creation experience. We've thought about it from the ground up. We have a global create button that's a lot easier to find. Uh, we have a create dialog or a wizard that allows you to much more easily work out what type of content you want to create on the way through. Uh, and the editor itself uh, has again had another rescan. Uh, it's a lot more visual, it's a lot easier for people to understand the different editor functions, and it's a lot more responsive for different browser sizes, editing on projectors, that sort of thing. The primary goal of the redesigning Confluence 5 was to make life easier for new users to understand and comprehend what was happening in Confluence and to create uh, really rich content and for existing users to just fix a lot of the niggles that have grown in the product over time. I think you'll see that you can get a lot more work done faster and certainly onboarding new people a lot quicker. You're welcome. I contacted the owners and they said, great idea, we'll do a video for you. Um, so that, that was it. Uh, there are other videos that you can watch on your own. Uh, but So I wanted to go through some of the high level things. Then we're going to jump into uh, the internet, click around a little bit. Uh, and the big thing that I want to take away here is, is it's our internet, right? So the more that we use it, the more it's powerful, the less, the less, right? And so knowing what it can do is probably the biggest piece of the puzzle. Um, actually, just today uh, I had a conversation with Kyle and we were walking through kind of how their team can get ready for a meeting on Monday and use this tool to put all their thoughts into one page. Uh, and the beauty is, is then that lives on, right? And we can always add to it, we can go back and search for it. So the create button, um, we'll go into the actual, I'll click around in Confluence here in a second. Um, but the create button is where you'd start, that's where you'd make all your pages. And one of the big things that they've made some big improvements on is the templates. So that way the page kind of already has a, a feel to it when you start it. And I think that'll make more sense uh, in a moment. Um, the sidebar, the space on the sidebar, that's really an area where I think everybody would want to pay attention to and customize to what they do. So that way you can get to stuff easily. So getting your favorites over there, getting your uh, departments. In the, the version before, we had it all organized so there was all the departments in there. And probably the first day you logged in, you're like, well, where's my department at, right? So it does take a couple seconds to get that set up. But once you're set up, now you can make it flexible for you rather than just for everyone, if that makes sense. Uh, the JIRA notifications, um, the, the tie-in to this, what's called the work box right up here. Uh, and we'll, I'll be demoing that in a second. But, but truly being able to have everything come into one area and we can hit tie in JIRA, Everybody's going to be different in that realm. So as you start to look at these uh, different features, if it makes more sense in your area, 
to build that out more. Um, I'm more than willing to, to sit down, talk through it, help you out. I, I love doing that. I love making your job easier. Less clicks, less systems. All that, to me, uh, helps and makes sense. And, and so I want to help do that. I just have to hear from somebody that that's what they want. Uh, the top nav, having a drop down that then has all of our systems. So we can put Bamboo HR up there. We can put uh, Jira up there. So no longer do you have to, what is that website again? Which one is it? What, you know, what system are we using for this? It can be right there, all of our different systems. Uh, obviously, if you go to an outside of uh, Confluence or Jira pr product, you wouldn't have the link back. So that nav doesn't stay up there, but at least you have a way to get there. And there we go. Uh, recently viewed pages. Um, so when you start to search, it automatically knows where you've been. Uh, they did some huge imp improvements there to make sure that you are not losing the pages that you're working on. They're hard to find. In page alerts, I think that makes sense to a lot of us, but knowing that they're there uh, makes you use the product more. So if you live life more in Confluence in the internet, uh, you'll be getting a lot out of it. Uh, dropping videos right onto pages is so much easier. So if there is a video, a product demo like that one, if you were on the Confluence page that I created for the update, a lot of the stuff was there, and that's how we got the video in there. It was just grab the URL from YouTube, drop it right on the page, and look at that. Now you actually have it embedded. You didn't have to get the code for that. Make sense? Everybody. Uh, PowerPoint, PDFs, documents, awesome. Like images, just drag and drop images in there. Or if you put a PowerPoint in there, it yep. automatically converts it to princess. Yep. And we actually put a, uh, a plug in. Uh, so this is a good example of if, if you're finding something that's not quite working right, um, let me know. I'll help you through it. Uh, Adam and I, we, we worked on this uh, Excel plugin. So he can drop an Excel actual file right into the page and be able to have the, the formulas work. Because right now, Confluence just lets you do tables. Well, tables don't do formulas, right? So you had to take it another step forward. But they're able to utilize that functionality much better. And in a little bit here, I'm going to show you the, the mobile app. Uh, the mobile app's huge from the standpoint that if you start using the tasks that are inside of the internet, if you start utilizing the pages here, um, it's formatted automatically for you when you go on your device, on your iOS or whatever. And I think that somebody from Staples needs in if you grab the door. Thank you. Are you the deliver man? Deliver the package off? That's him! All right, so a uh, quick show of hands, comments, the upgrade to uh, Confluence, the upgrade to the internet. Good, bad, indifferent, I'm not going to be offended. I only want to make it better if you say bad, but any thoughts? Is there anything you can do to integrate the global doc into it? It almost looks like a one-stop shop for everything. Global doc, global doc is that, though. Like the, because global doc basically tries to take any status number. Hey, sir, do you want some pizza or something? Help yourself. Pizza, pop, anything at all? Help yourself. I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, so Flodoc takes basically, it's, it's like Skype's a one-way conversation, right? right. And obviously the, the more we keep growing with the 50-some people that are going to be getting hired in India, start, and starting now, we already started that process, right? And expanding other offices and expanding the, you know, uh, uh, the people here that we have and, and, and people remote that we already have as well. I mean, we got all these different things happening, right? Conversations, teams. Flodoc is to basically, the theory of Flodoc is to take a room that, so instead of having a Skype one-way conversation, which is kind of not a, it's, it, your team's not in the loop. Flowdoc basically says, hey, let's have a conversation surrounding only the relevant people on the relevant topic of what they're working on. So there'd be a, each product would have its own room, or each company has its own room. So that everybody on that whole team, it's like, we always want to maintain, no matter how large and clunky we have to get, we never want to be clunky, right? And we never want to break that, uh, create layers of red tape, keep the organization flat, keep everybody in the same loop. So the goal is, is Flowdoc is pretty much simple. Let's create rooms that have, you know, extremely relevant conversations related to everything to do with that product so that your small focus like teams always feel small and always feel focused no matter how big and scalable an organization gets. There's that still that startup like feel. And then also any activity that gets or page that gets updated in Confluence will feed that room automatically. So if you just added something to the, the design room and you're in the design flow, next thing you know, you're seeing that get updated. Or if you're in Jira and you update your task on that product that you're working on in that room, 
it will feed that task saying, hey, Joey just did this in here and just move that to testing. By the way, sweet, everyone can comment on it, sweet, awesome. If they click it, they can actually get sent right from Flowdoc into the actual page that Joey just created, or Fred just created, or Jimmy just created, or whatever it might be. So it's like you're taking the activities, the task, and updates to our documentation, and you're feeding them into one room so that basically it's a complete conversation of what's happening. It's like your, your fingers on the pulse, right, of, of what things are moving around me, happening around me, and what things are not happening. You realize it all there. Does that answer your question, I think? Yeah. Kind of what I was getting at is like they uh, for the scrape of the upper room. They ask questions and then they answer each other's questions and then it'd be nice if we could just input that in as common points to the search as well as like okay, next question. So it's kind of cool to you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I know Flowdoc though is made your 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 tasks are being updated in Jira. Your so you're really only going into Jira to read project descriptions and, and to move things back and forth and statuses, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> Uh, in Confluence, you're going there to document a product, right? So, for instance, uh, Sean is, is, is going to go and, and, and she's coming up with a plan of what we need to do for definitions of customer success, right? Or, or what does that look like? So she's going to take that whole, all the content she's pulling together. She can even do polls. She can do questions. She can document the process of each step with glippy diagrams, do all these things. And that's being documented so everything can be found by the whole team instead of everyone going, where do I find this or that or whatnot? It's all cross linked, but the activities those happen though. That's the conversation is happening in Flowdoc. I think that. So I, I think yeah, there's the active parts of Flowdoc, the back and forth, the and then the confluence of documentation almost. It's just straight documentation. Yeah. So Flowdoc is the conversation, the pulse of the project. I don't. I think the more cluttered we would make it, like in Jira or in Confluence, my gut tells me that we're now now you're maintaining conversations everywhere. I think the more that you just use those for their for what they're good for the toolkit they're good for, um, I think it will help facilitate making sure the conversation takes place in Flowdoc. Otherwise, you have too much noise. That's my guess. I could be wrong, but obviously, you guys got a better way to do it, right? And it's it's a good point too because part of the confusion when you have different systems is which one do I use to be my medium, right? And so that helps, right? Here in that conversation, so we all kind of are on the same page. So you're not trying to make Confluence into your Flowdoc, but at the same time, utilize all the functionality that is there. So. If I could add something too, I've had situations similar to that where I was having either a conversation in Flowdoc and I'm sitting here in my head going, oh, was that in Confluence or was that in Jira or in Flowdoc? Um, when uh, Mike had that page up that showed Confluence and there's that feed on the left hand side that shows everything that's coming in from Jira from Confluence, you can go in there and do a search for whatever you're looking for and it'll search Jira and Confluence right in that thing. So. It makes it a little pretty easy to do. On a flow doc. Mm -hmm. On a flow. Got it. Got it. So, yeah, we, we should dig more into that just to make sure everybody's on the same page. We can put a page up in Confluence that describes it, explains it exactly how we can utilize them. That would be probably a good, uh, good thing to do. Um, so, inside of uh, the intranet here, some areas that are new, that top bar, um, this work box, this is where notifications come in. You can see that uh, Rochelle shared the stand up. So when you get pages that are shared with you, um, they show up here. So you can quickly get to them. Uh, if you had tasks, you could put the tasks in here. So I put some just as a, a, a sample here, because I want to show you on the mobile app how that works. But if somebody inside a Confluence, uh, you might have saw in the video, right, the at symbol with your name, that, that's giving them a task, it'll show up into their task list. So that's something that we can explore as a group to see if that's an area that um, helps with those kind of one-off tasks. These aren't the big JIRA tasks either, so it's, you got to understand kind of where, where they're at. You manage um, projects out of JIRA and all the individual sub-items of that task, right, essentially, in JIRA. Confluence is a Wikipedia on steroids. It's it, with a simple task management of just uh, pick up the laundry or make sure I mail this out today. It's not high-level projects or anything like that. Yeah. This personal task list up in the work box, the work, uh, yeah, the work box area. So, it's to -do list, basically. yeah, yeah, and it may not work for you, for the, for this uh, purpose. But I just want to make sure that everybody saw it was there. Um, so, what I want to do right now is just jump into one of these pages, and show the creation of a new page because this is another area where it, I think, uh, took it up a notch um, from a UI standpoint. Uh, they've had these templates for a little bit, but. Uh, the ability to make exactly what we need, I think we're, we're at that point. 
um, just to make them. And so I have a sample of a, a stand-up one that I've been working on. Uh, but if I go into the sales group, they have one, maybe. Here we go, product requirements. So I want to show you what a template looks like and why we would utilize a template. And it's really to save you time. So you can see here that it lists out a lot of the items that you may populate on the page. And so this is your starting point, it's a template. I probably don't have to go much further than that, uh, but dig into it and there's videos that show you how uh, and also the, the last tech talk. To your point too, have you guys noticed like you go to Wikipedia and there's standards of like how every, there's obviously yeah. Wikipedia is maintained by contributors right, all over the world. So how do they make that consistency of how things look and do that? They set templates and they set guidelines and, they, and basically if this is how you create a page, this is the template you file, this is what you put here, put there. It is repetitive things like, for instance, with uh, uh, Pharrell's standpoint, uh, creative brief, project briefs, um, you know, em uh, empathy maps, uh, uh, user flows, um, all that stuff. There's like templates that we can set predefined of like the basics that you're always going to use, or like a business model canvas, for instance, or or if it's a tech support training uh, uh, review, or a customer call center checklist, or if it's a, a, a customer workflow. There's templates that you can set that are predefined for all this, and it's again, it's that's your library of information of like. And you just share, think about how easy it is. You're working on a project, you share your project notes, so if somebody new comes on for onboarding, it's instant. It's like everything's already there, it's documented. But we have to start documenting everything we do every day so that the goal is not to make you know, a site that competes with Wikipedia with a billion pages. The goal is to make the least amount of pages possible that tells a story and allows them to be on the same page. So. Can you, you can make your templates too, then? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's, it's a great point. And the, the reason why I want to share this is the, the one thing I love about this company versus some other places, here everybody is, is at a level of, of they can see this and go, oh, this is what I want to do. Now to know exactly how to do it, let me know. I'll help in this arena um, because now we can accomplish that together. But, but just having that thought of, okay, I want a template that does this because we'd use it every day and that would just crank out and save so much time. Uh, other arenas, right, other companies, you'd have to create that template, share it with people as if like they wouldn't have that forethought to, to come up with the template. Does that make sense? So I want to share this just so you say, oh yeah, okay, now I know that's there. And then when you go back to your day job, you're going to go, oh, you know what, I can use it here. And then we can start talking in more in depth. Yeah, like, 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 you, the second you go to the dashboard, like the, that space, it would say, here's the people with a picture of their face. We've actually done this in the past. We have the both real pages, but uh, uh, you, you can create a template of like the team. So when you go to that space, you know who the people are, what they do, uh, uh, what their roles are, uh, uh, and basically it can have an activity feed next to it, and there's some KPIs that, that, they, that you want them to see every single time about them, and they would show the whole dashboard metrics right in front of them. It's really cool. I mean, like, it's just a great way of like, who are all these faces? We have, I mean, obviously dozens of people all over the world that we're here, so it's like outside of here. Who are they? What do they do? What are they doing? Why, where are they from? What's their involvement? How do I get something? I mean, all these things are. It's about answering repetitive questions to stop interruptions and to make it easy for onboarding and, and, and scalability. Scalability is, is documenting things as is, is to make it as easy as possible so that everybody knows where to find things. It's cool. This is a repository of knowledge. Excellent, excellent. So, again. Yeah. I love it. Uh, nice really, honestly, just trying to make it so you, you can start thinking about how to make your job better, how to make maybe the people you're working with jobs better, and then I, I'm willing to help. You know, I, I can jump in there. So you don't have to then also teach yourself how to do the back end, or maybe you don't have the exact uh, admin right to do some little thing. Um, so definitely reach out. Uh, I want to just bring up so everybody knows we got rid of uh, Zendesk. It's out. Uh, Desk.com is in. Um, Sympathy, Sympathy Store was already using Zenda or uh, Desk.com, and so now on the support side we're using. Uh, yeah. Um, so this is a quick video on how iHeartRadio uses Desk.com, and again, I'm only just trying to stretch on how we can use that same platform maybe further than what we're currently using it. Or Facebook chat. My name is Michael Bianzo. I work here at 
Clear Channel Radio Digital, also known as iHeart Radio, as the Vice President of Customer Operations. iHeart Radio is a free application that streams 800 plus radio stations from coast to coast. Our customers, our listeners, folks who love music, news talk, our team supports folks daily, folks that have inquiries or questions or concerns. Death is by far one of the best tools I've worked with for multi channel funneling all this chatter into one central repository and managing the workload day to day. It's excellent. You don't drop a ball with Death.com. We really need something to launch cost effectively, fast, and easy. And Death absolutely fits the bill. We were able to get up and running within 48 hours. Easy experience, a delightful experience. It's been a godsend. So you may have noticed some areas that we don't currently use. And then as you're going through your day job, you might be like, wait a minute, we could probably get issues from Facebook. And we could respond in Facebook. Just a thought. Um, make sure we're going to go back here just for a second. So the other thing that I love about this place is it's not about switching systems for the fun of switching systems. It's about switching systems because it's better. Uh, there's a reason for that. Oh, we have another one that needs in. Looks like we can, thanks. Um, and, and so there will be a new system tomorrow or next year or the following year, right? I mean, that's going to happen because we're, we're willing to go to that other system. And this is one of those cases where it was just, it made more sense than to keep on Zendesk to move over to desk.com. There, there were some benefits to that. And so let's make the move. And, and the downside isn't bad or at all. So now the fun. We have a little bit of time here. So um, now I'm going to share some fun apps that I use just as like a little bonus round tech talk. So hopefully that's good. Um, so Air Server is something you could put on your PC or your Mac. And what it allows you to do is take anything from your iOS device and display it right onto your Mac as if you're doing AirPlay to an Apple TV or something of that nature. Again, you can run this on a PC. So if you have your PC laptop and you want to display a video from your iPhone on there, this is a, an app that you can use. There's a few out there like that. Uh, and so if you want to show somebody Facebook that's hooked to your TV that has a Mac Mini, well, you can use this to display it up there. And so what I want to do right now is go through just a couple apps, if you want. Way, it's actually not an option. The Air Surf thing that you're showing? Yeah. We've got that are not even utilized. So if anyone wants to like, actually use them, I love it. Uh, we bought them for that reason. Um, we have. Uh, Mac Minis that are sitting, brand, like they're pretty much brand new. They've been turned on only a few times, and they were used to be going behind uh, the TVs out there. So you guys can leverage all that stuff to actually share content, just like the show, and actually across the device. Or we also have some Apple TV, uh, the TV, the TV. We got another two other competitors of Apple TVs here. I don't know, I forgot what they're called, but they're somewhere around here. But yes, yeah, so you guys want to leverage the stuff? We have we buy it for that reason. I mean, uh, do some cool shit with it. Just make sure skip them. Excellent. So this app here, I just love the fact that I can just be on my iPhone and display it up. At my house, I just have a big screen TV hooked to a Mac Mini, and I can just interact with my iPhone. Um, one of the apps I really like is Nest. Has anybody heard of Nest? It's a thermostat we were talking about the other day. Anybody have one? You should. It really does save you money. It really does. It really does save you money. And it's fun to see the analytics. Right now, I'm away from my house. So you have these programmable thermostats in your house, and that's kind of cool and all. But you want to interact with it. You want to see what's going on. So with this, I can actually go in, if I'm on the same Wi-Fi, which I'm not, I can go in and change all the settings. I can see how much energy I've been using. Uh, I think it'll connect here in a second. There we go. I can see that Saturday I used three and a half hours of heat, and I didn't use it at all on Friday, which isn't that valuable, right? But it's fun to see. Um, but I can also go in here and turn on my fan. Maybe two hours before I go home every day, I can actually program it to just turn on the fan, not the air. Right, because that would just take more uh, money, right? But you can have the fan turn on for a couple hours, and then the air turns on. It does some crazy stuff in the background, like during the winter time, or yeah. So it knows that uh, during the summer you have your air conditioning on. It gets really cold down in your basement, right? And so rather than just running your air conditioner until it hits to a point where it gets to that temperature that you want it to be, like 68 degrees, like I want it to be, or 72 if it's my wife, um, which is just too hot, right? But uh, it'll keep the fan on at the very end. So normally, uh, everybody else has their air conditioner unit running until 
right when it gets to 68, then it cuts off. Well, you just waste a lot of money because it could have went lower in temperature-wise. So Nest will turn it off maybe an hour before. Just keep the fan going because it's really cold downstairs. Make sense? Kind of cool stuff like that. So I, I actually bought one of these things because like uh, uh, before Rochelle gets home, I'll actually kick the bathroom fan on automatically so it actually can warm up and be prepared for Rochelle to actually hit the... <laughs> and it's worked really well. Yeah. No more paint going off walls. It's awesome. Yeah. Anybody? Uh, I can't believe you just said that. What? Uh, anybody use Wonderlist? Right here, I do. There you go. There's a go. Um, Wonderlist is a, it's an awesome company to follow. I, I love just the way that they go about different things. It, every platform out there. So uh, Steve, where are you at? Oh, is he on the phones? Mm. They have Android apps for that because we've had lots of discussions about that. Um, Android apps, that is. Uh, we'll, we'll dive into that in a second. Uh, fuel ban. Anybody have a fuel ban? I'll jump in the app in one second. Uh, travel, anybody have an app that people use this one? Yeah. See, the main reason why I want to share this is because like, honestly, this saves my life. Uh, just from a stress standpoint, coming into work. This was actually me on the way into work the other day. 8.50, I'm stuck up here near Troy. I'm looking at all of this red. I'm not gonna make it, right? But it's also telling me that I'm probably gonna get in about 9.33. I know what time I'm get in, no big deal. Uh, there ended up being a, a really bad car accident here and stretchers and everything like that. I was glad to be just in my car, putzing along, no the big Android deal. What's that? And the Android version, right? Uh, and then podcasts. Um, didn't mean to start that back up. There we go. So fuel bands, really cool. And they, there's a bunch of them out there. There's Jawbone makes one. Even though their first one they, they recalled and they just let people keep the device, which is just funny. Do you imagine paying 120 bucks, I think, for something? And the company's like, oh yeah, it doesn't really work that well. By the way, just keep it. We'll give you back your money. Do you imagine that? So anyway, they came out with another one uh, just recently. But Nike came out with this uh, fuel band uh, shortly thereafter. And it tracks your activity through that day. So I believe this was the wedding. So you can see I, I slept a little bit, I got up, moving along, and then that's the rest of my day, right? Um, I have a baby, and so I had one that I wanted to show and make sure that Martin saw this. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Got up in the middle of the night, little bump right there. Um, so yeah, it, when they were really little, it was just basically all the way up here. Remember, this is sleeping, so it's just kind of all the way. Um, but here's the thing. I had a coworker that had one of these and uh, she was trying to lose some weight. And so when she got home from work, she was like, man, I'm tired, I had a long day. Well, she was mentally tired, she wasn't physically tired, but who really knows what that really means, right? And so she looked down at her fuel band and she realized she didn't hit her goal for the day. And she's like, all right, let's grab the dog, go for a walk, right? So she was able to still keep going with her big goal and not let just kind of a one day kind of set her back, if you will. Um, Wonderlist, uh, it's an easy interface. Um, one of the things that I use Wonderlist for, which is kind of funny, but uh, it, it's when I go shopping. So I share a list with my wife, and she can add items in on the fly, and then I can just check them off when I'm in the store. Bananas? We, we, we could, we could. Oh, and my uh, sister-in-law is at um, the uh, Tigers game right now. Just down the street. Yeah, huh. that's her seat. Those are pretty good. Yeah, good thing. Good thing she didn't. So that's Wonderlist. And then the last one that I wanted to share, uh, or two more, podcasts. People listen to podcasts here? Um, I, I'm going to start a page in Confluence, and we can share maybe the, the ones that people like. Because I know there's a bunch of people with commutes, and it's amazing what you can learn from podcasts. And the good ones are good, and the bad ones are bad. So um, we can share our favorites. Uh, but some of my favorites you can see up top there, Entree Leadership, This Is Your Life. Um, this Seth Godin startup is just a, a series. It's not an ongoing thing, but it's really good stuff. I don't know what that was. Oh. It did say that. It did say that. So that's a bad thing about being live and taped. Um, and using like your own. It's not the worst bit at all, right? All right. And then the, the coolest app ever. It's a premium 25 bucks, 
to be able to add in additional locations other than just work and home. But so I have my, where my kids go to daycare. So every day I know exactly how long it's gonna take me to get there. And then I also know how long it's gonna take me to get to work. And for me, it's more just a stress reliever, just cause I know about, when I leave here, I know about when I'm gonna get home. Uh, and there's other cool features like I can text my wife real quick. Um, now it's on tape and everybody's gonna be texting her. Um, so you go into the actual app here and it's a community of people saying what's going on. Right now, it would be the best time for me to leave. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go home. Um, it is, you can get anywhere in Detroit, right? Uh, but what this does, it'll map out. And a lot of times what it'll do is it'll give you two options. So you can just toggle back and forth up top and really see, wow, I can save 10 minutes if I go this way. For example, Fridays, I don't get it. Fridays, I live up there, right? The red, we're working here. It makes sense, go up 75, 696, although I drive through here a lot and it's kind of fun to see the scenery. Um, but so to get up to there, it would make no sense to go over to this point, fair? But because of this app, I've done that probably a dozen times and saved hours on my commute because it would be faster to take 94 all the way to Hall Road and then up 53 because of all the traffic just in this little section. So, and is, it, fun is, app. This, is this app running in the background, I'm assuming? And it's, yep. it's, it's seeing if you're slowing down, it knows that you're on that road and basically avoid it. Yeah, yeah. You and don't check in saying, hey, there's yeah. an accident. Absolutely. And you, can, and you can actually tell it things too as a community base. Like, uh, let's say that the speeds are wrong. You know, it says it's red, or it says it's green, but really it's red. You know, you can check in and, and say that and get points. And there's a whole like social aspect to it. Oh, there's a cop on the side of the road. It'll tell you that too. I was going home just yesterday and it said there was a cop in a mile and a half, and there was. Um, so that was good to know, I guess. We weren't going that fast anyway. Oh, here's actually the reporting aspect of it that you can report. But when you see all the accidents, you can see if it's on the left side or the right side. I'm way too strategic for this. I'm sure you guys don't do this, but um, uh, it's spelled I-N-R-I-X. I-N-R-I-X. No, no, I'm not too worried about it. I'm more of one of those uh, people that just utilizes it. I, I use other people to do it. Um, but, but I love it when people report accidents and say what side the, the accident's on. So as I'm coming down, I'll, it'll say, oh, the accident's on the left side. Well, then I'll work my way to the right side. By the time I get there, that side's just flying by where they're all still sitting there. Because everybody goes to the left, right? Yeah. Anytime it slows down, you go to the left. Except for when you go on southbound on the way into work here, never be in the far left. It just doesn't work out. So anyway, cool stuff. So I want to start a page uh, inside the internet with apps, and I'd love for people to share uh, work-related, personal. They only make your life better. You know, there's other ones that I use. Uh, there's some personal assistant type apps that are really coming out that uh, supposedly save you time. Uh, for example, I pretty much only found that it makes sense to populate it with birthdays, but it posts birthdays for you. Um, but this app here actually tells me that I've saved an hour and nine minutes because of 65 tasks that I had it do instead of me. Um, but by having it do it, for example, let's see if I can get to any of these. Um, classmate of Joey right here. So we'll, we'll open her up. I don't know if you remember. But, uh, so it, it, I can post right onto the Facebook using this app. I can say happy birthday, all that kind of fun stuff. But that's the presentation today.